Hi, I'm Martha Wilson, founding director of Franklin Furnace, and this is the history of performance art, according to me. There is no agreement as to where, when, and why performance art was invented. I take this as an opening to advance my theory, which appeared gradually through the Merck during the time I have piloted Franklin Furnace. While viewing the exhibition Futurism and Futurisms, presented in 1985 at Palazzo Grassi in Venice, I realized that the beginning of performance art might be fixed in that moment on July 8, 1910, when the Italian futurist painters and poets threw 800,000 copies of against Passeus Venice from the clock tower above Piazza San Marco onto the heads of citizens emerging from church. The futurists claimed Venice was a great sewer of traditionalism, a physical confrontation ensued, and in my view, performance art was born. This is a futurist performance. I don't know where I got this slide from. This is Mel Gordon's Mass 42 Company, a recreation of a work from Nikolai Foreger's 1923 Moscow Cabaret, Good Treatment for Horses by Vladimir Moss. Contemporary performance art still exhibits the traces of this art historical moment in the following ways. Performance is composed of often confrontational ideas. It takes place in real time and the body is its irreducible medium, the locus where text and image intersect. This is Frank Moore, 1983, unknown venue, Peggy Pettit, Women Preachers, 1990, at Franklin Furnace. Paul Burwell, 1982, playing a burning instrument. Confrontation is apparent even in tamed, pay your money, sit in chairs performance art being practiced nowadays. In my experience, performance artists are not the kind of people who wish to be discovered working in garrets, but rather hope to change the world Never mind that artists have little impact on social, political, economic, and philosophical life. If they don't shake you by the lapels, they'll go mad. Alvin Eng, Over the Counter Culture, 1991. Thought Music, Laurie Carlos, Jessica Hagedorn, Robin McCauley, and John Wu. Teeny Town, 1988, which examined how racism is embedded in popular culture. Robbie McCauley, My Father and the Wars, 1985, in which she discusses her family's story of the charge by Teddy Roosevelt up San Juan Hill. The black troops, who were sent up the hill first, told the Spanish locals to clear out because these white guys were coming. They did. And the hill was taken. History was made. The next day, everything went back to normal. Performance art, in my view, is the opposite of theater which holds, according to Samuel Taylor Coleridge, the willful suspension of disbelief as its objective. Performance art has raided literature, music, dance, and theater traditions, while theater has borrowed from performance art conventions, spreading confusion. But in general, performance artists remind their audience, there is no artifice here. This is happening now in real time. Frank Green, The Scarlet Letters, 1994, at the New School, a piece about AIDS which took off from The Scarlet Letter by Nathaniel Hawthorne. Minio Aimaguchi, Space Here and Now, 1982. Anonymous Artist, 1987. Jill Crozen, Stanley Oil and His Mother, a systems portrait of the Western world an economic study for which Stanley Oil passed out raisins to the audience in a show of largesse. Because it is embedded in the body, performance art takes time itself to be its primary subject. Teaching Shea's one-year performances during which he lived in a cage, lived outside, punched a time clock every hour, was tied to another person, did no art, place the body's expenditure of time at the center of the idea. Teaching Shane one-year performance, Living Outside, 1983, 
as installed at Franklin Furnace. Uh, this is a slide of him during the Four Seasons. Um, these are maps of, of everywhere he went in Lower Manhattan during every one of 365 days of the year. And these are his clothes. The body is the new art medium of the 20th century, discovered by way of the text by visual artists who were in turn inspired by a poet, Stefan Mallarmé, whose 1897 poem, Un coup de day, jamais n'abolira le hasard, was widely discussed in Parisian café society. A dealer on the scene, Daniel Henri Kahnweiler, declared, it was only after 1907 that the poetry of Stefan Mallarmé, in my opinion, exerted a powerful influence on plastic art, an influence that was combined with Paul Cézanne's painting. It was through reading Mallarmé that the Cubists found the courage to invent freely. Guillaume Apollinaire, poems from Cubist Prints, Cubist Books show at Franklin Furnace, a book by Mayakovsky, Russian avant-garde books, 1910 to 1930. Surely, the poet who founded futurism, Filippo Tommaso Marinetti, ripped off Mallarmé when he produced Paroli and Libertà, Words and Freedom, his manifesto of 1912. Hugo Ball acknowledged that the starting point of sound poetry and other experiments at Cabaret Voltaire in Zurich was with Marinetti's manifesto, which took the word out of the sentence frame, the world image. Kandinsky read the first Futurist Manifesto on the front page of the Paris newspaper Le Figaro and took the idea that artists could use the broadcast media of publications and performance to Moscow, where I understand the Russian constructivist artists organized huge mass performances in Red Square. Stefan Mallarmé's Un coup de day, jamais n'abolira le hasard. What was so great about Un coup de day? It cast words in various point sizes on the page, transforming the page into visual art space. And it freed the reader from prescribed linear order, conferring the possibility of multiple interpretations. Finally, its subject, a throw of the dice will never eliminate chance, and form were congruent, as the body is the source and the form through which performance art is created. Jenny Holzer's Truisms, 1978. A thread of visual artist thinking throughout the 20th century was intent upon achieving a state of unity between thought and action, word and deed, text and image. Fluxus artist Dick Higgins coined the term intermedia in the 1960s to describe art practice that could use any and all media appropriate to the embodiment of an idea. Conceptual artist Lawrence Wiener's 1968 book, Statements, contains the following words set in a block of type like a brick. One regular rectangular object placed across an international boundary allowed to rest then turned to and turned upon to intrude the portion of one country into the other. Is this not a set of instructions for a performance?